A histogram is a type of chart that shows data visually. It's very similar to a bar chart, but the difference is that a histogram groups data into, into ranges. You can see the bar chart has individual categories like the USA and India, and that there are gaps in between each bar. Whereas a histogram, it has number ranges rather than categories, and there are no gaps in between each bar. A frequency distribution, shown in the item on the left, um, shows how often an item or a number or a range of numbers occurs. You can see number of cappuccinos made per hour at the cafe has a frequency distribution because they made some ranges. Uh, it says number of cups of coffee, but it really should say cappuccino. So um, if in an hour they made only zero to three cups of cappuccino, they made a little tally and you can see that happened twice. And in an hour, if there were between four and seven cups of coffee, cappuccino made, uh, they made more tick marks. That's their tally. And then they, that happened three times. So you can see the entire table shows the tally and frequency for each of those ranges. Well, that can be used to construct a histogram. You can see it, in the zero to three, there are two tick marks, so the frequency there is two. That happened twice. So that corresponds on our histogram to the column zero to three, and you can see that the bar goes all the way up to two. For four to seven cups of cappuccino, our tally is three, and so you can see you've got a four to seven range on the histogram, and the tally, the bar, goes up to three. The same with the rest of our categories. You can see each of the categories in the frequency table corresponding to the um, bars and the groups in the histogram. All right, when you're going to create a histogram, first of all, in terms of our language, really they're columns that we're seeing on the histogram, but they're also called bars, and sometimes they're all called bins Sometimes they're called groups. So these bins should all be the same size. That means the number of uh, units within each bin needs to be consistent all the way across. The bins should include all of the data, and the boundaries for the bins should reflect the data values being represented. So it should go uh, from the lowest data point to the highest data point, sort of taking into account um, a little bit outside of that for the group value. So we're going to determine the number of bins based on the data. There's not one right answer for that. You could do it in uh, multiple ways, but it should make sense based on the data. And if possible, the number of bins created should be a factor of the number of data points. So we're going to do an example here. The number of books read over the summer. So here is uh, some data. We polled a bunch of people and found out how many books they read over the summer. And here are all of our data points. We can make a histogram. And in this case, so we can make a histogram. And in this case, I decided our, my group size or my bin size is going to be two. So you can see at the bottom, uh, the categories down there are zero to two, two to four, four to six, because there are um, two units within each of those bins or groups. Now it's important to realize where the two goes. Um, that first yellow category is going to be anything from zero to two but not including the two. So you can see our data that is listed as zero or one goes into that first um, bar. The red category is where is going from two up to four, but not including four. So the points two and three would go into that one. Then we do from four up to six, but not including six. So four and five would go in there. And then we have six and seven is the green. Eight and nine is the fuchsia. 10 and 11, even though there are no 11s, that's in the orange. And then the magenta is 12 and 13 and 14. Now we're going to take that same data and make a different histogram, this time with a group size of three. So now our yellow group is including zero, one, and two. So there are seven data points within that one. The red one is three, four, and five, 10 data points there, etc. 
So our histogram can look a little bit different depending on our bin size, our group size. And here's one more version where we've made even uh, wider groups. Here our group size is four, and so you can see all of our groupings that way. All right, example two, here's some questions. Now we've got a histogram that shows the number of texts that a student sends each day. Well, this is obviously ridiculous and was created a long time ago because there's no way that a student would send only uh, four texts in a day. But we're going to proceed anyway. So most students sent between how many and how many texts? Well, the way we can figure that out is by looking and look, looking to see the bar that is the biggest. You can see between 8 and 10 goes the highest. Um, so five students sent between 8 and 10 texts in a day. That's actually the answer to our next question. How many students sent between 8 and 10? Well, you're going to look from the top of the bar all the way across. That hits at 5, and so our answer is 5 students. Next question, how many students are represented in this histogram? Well, we're going to add up all of the numbers for each of the bars, and you can see between 0 and 2 text, there was one person. Between 2 and 4, there was 3. 4, 4, and 5, add those all up, and we see that there were 17 students who were polled for this particular data set. Last question, if a student sent two texts, which bar would they be added to? Well, two is right there on the border, but we need to remember that the two always goes with the one that comes after. If it's on the border, it goes with the bar that comes after, so it would be added into that two to four bar. Example three, which histogram matches this data set? So we can see that data set, and what's interesting about it is doesn't necessarily come in number order. Sometimes it helps to rearrange it to figure out what we're doing. So we're going to put it in order from least to greatest, and that helps us just visually see what's going on with the data a little bit easier. So now which one matches? Well, let's take a look at each of those uh, histograms and see how they differ. You can see that the 0 to 20 category is both 4 for both of them, so that's not really going to be a helpful way to um, see a difference. The 20 to 40 uh, range is also th a frequency of 3. The 40 to 60 is a frequency of 2 for both. And the 80 to 100 is also the same for both. So really where they're different is the 60 to 80 range. The frequency um, on the left is a frequency of 3. And in the histogram on the right, the frequency is 4. So we've got to look for the numbers in the data set between 60 and up to 80, but not including 80. So we're going to include the 60, 67, and 77. We're not including that 80, because that goes with that next um, bar. So that's 3. So we can see that it matches the one on the left, because our bar needs to only go up to 3. 